College Bowling, the Lindenwood Lions make their way onto the lanes, a smaller school with a big-time dream to win a national championship. They'll have to get past the top-ranked team in the country, the Fresno State Bulldogs. Both teams have their eyes on the prize, the Intercollegiate Bowling Championship. Give yourself about 10 seconds and enjoy where you're at. Again, Remember, this is this is this is good fun, and this is what it's all about. But but we have unfinished business. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stay but it's just like Stay yeah. 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 What time is it? I said, what time is it? Yeah. 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 It's the biggest prize in college bowling, the Helmer Cup. Winning it demands not only skill and consistency, but something more. In a sport where individual performance is usually in the spotlight, here it is teamwork that matters most. The Fresno State Bulldogs have proven to be the best team all year as they take a number one national ranking into the championship. They'll take on tiny Lindenwood University from St. Charles, Missouri. Who will stay on a roll? Find out next. We come to you from America's heartland, spotlighting the nation's most popular sports. The best college bowlers in the country have gathered at the Cherry Bowl in Rockford, Illinois. The 2005 Intercollegiate Bowling Championships, the Lindenwood Lions from Missouri taking on the Fresno State Bulldogs for the men's title. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Weber. We at CSTV are thrilled to bring you this 31st edition of the premier event in college bowling, a sport that's growing in popularity on college campuses. Over 80 schools now field men's teams. The top 16 made it here to Rockford, and this is a grueling event. No fluke to get through to the championship. We had a qualifying round for seeding. Then six rounds, best of seven matches, double elimination format, bringing us to the championship round. Fresno State, the eight seed, knocking off defending champs Kansas along the way. They're looking for leadership from the premier college bowler in the country, P.J. Haggerty, reigning college bowler of the year. Lindenwood, the 14 seed, putting together a remarkable role, knocking out national powers like Wichita State and Moorhead State. They're going to look to the man with the unconventional release. That's Brian Valenza, who lets it go with two hands. The IBC uses the Baker system, a format which calls for different bowlers rolling in different frames, five bowlers aside. You see how it breaks down. Each team can use a substitute. The sub player then is out of the game. This is the first championship round appearance for both teams. Best of three to crown a national champion. Fresno State rolls first. My name is Chad Uehara. I'm an accounting major and I'm from Maia, Hawaii. Chad, the sophomore, gets things going for Fresno State. Come on, Chad. The accounting major piles up big numbers for the Bulldogs. An impressive strike. Unorthodox delivery as he works his way towards the lane, but took out the head pin, and the rest of the pins complied for the strike. Time now for the Lions to roll. Emil Williams, Communications, Chicago, Illinois. Emil the Jr. From here in Illinois, looking to duplicate that strike. Williams counters, knocking 10 down. You can hear the encouragement of his teammates as these players are kind enough to allow us to mic them. College Sports TV taking you inside the game. A look at the top 10 nationally. Fresno State, number one in the country. A deep and talented squad. You don't see Lindenwood. They're number 13, but they've gotten hot at the right time playing their way into this national championship match. Time now for the Bulldogs' second bowler. My name is Keith Anderson. I'm a business finance major from El Tuloma, California. Keith trying to provide senior leadership, looking for back-to-back -back strikes. He's got it! Anderson started middle, moved it towards the outside, and then grooved it right back where he wanted it, knocking them all down. 
These teams responding to national title pressure with three straight strikes. Jesse Scrivens, accounting major, Athens, Pennsylvania. And now the onus shifts to Jesse. Can the sophomore make it four consecutively? Yes, sir! Lane cam gives you a sense of just how fast that ball is moving. And all ten oblige. Two frames complete and we're dead even. A stellar start to the 2005 IBC. More of game one in a moment. In Rockford, Illinois, the site has 16 teams assembled for the national championship tournament. The premier event in college bowling. A coaches bowl got things rolling. In early action, last year's finalist, Saginaw Valley State, was knocked out. The faces of the Cardinals say it all. Defending champs Kansas also had trouble. In round three, the Newman Jets, also from Kansas, took out the reigning champions in the semifinals. Fresno State was pushed to the limit by West Texas A&M. The Buffs had a chance to extend the match, but Fresno State advanced. It was very close, very, very close. It was um, very exciting, though, but uh, there's a lot of pressure, I guess. In the second semifinal, national power Moorhead State took on Lindenwood. The Eagles won the first match, but the Lions put the ball in the capable two hands of Brian Valenta, and Lindenwood earned a spot in the championship. It's all might come through in the end, and that's what I hope to do, and we're not done yet. More work to be done for both squads. Fresno State still undefeated. Lindenwood rallying to earn a spot in the championship and Kansas not able to defend their national crowd. In this championship match, two frames done, four strikes. Can it roll on? I'm Eric Buckley. I'm a liberal studies major and I'm from Madera, California. Eric, an honorable mention, All-America a year ago. First non-strike so far, but that sets up a straightforward spare attempt. Got it a bit too far left and couldn't get the counter action he was looking for. Words of encouragement from the team leader for the dogs, P.J. Haggerty. Straight on, and Buckley nails the spare. So bottom of the third now, and Lindenwood with a chance to take an early lead with a strike. Ryan Reed, business major, Richmond, British Columbia. Ryan seems like he's all business, and a big frame with which to generate some power. Same result, though, as Buckley left the three and six. Reed, excellent follow through. Didn't get the pull he was looking for. There's a face of concentration. No trouble dialing up the spare. There was more than just bowling during this exciting week in Rockford. The annual awards banquet was a chance for the players to dress up and enjoy an evening. Hardware was handed out. Fresno State, well represented on the first team All-American list with two of the five honorees. Brian Valenta also picking up the nod. P.J. Haggerty, player of the year, his coach. One Carlson winning Coach of the Year honors. Carlson, a giant in the sport. He's devoted many years to college bowling. It's more than just strikes. The role of a college coach is uh, almost like a father to the, all the students. Teach them the game. Teach them how to act on the lanes and off the lanes. Father away from home, I guess you might say. Indeed, Glenn, a father figure, and he has to be pleased so far. Two strikes and a spare for his team, heading to the fourth and an All-American. My name is Ivan Miyasato. I'm a physical therapy major, and I'm from Aya, Hawaii. 
Ivan, one of three Hawaiians on this Bulldog roster. Very deliberate with his approach. And leaves himself some work to be done. It'll be a tricky 2-8-10 split. Good follow through. Ivan did well to avoid the channel, but as you see, got back to the pocket late. Took care of two pins, but couldn't get the kick over for the 10 and the first open frame in this competition. Shea Binmender, business major, Scram, Pennsylvania. So a chance now for Lindenwood to seize upon. And Shea cashes in big time. Did well to get the ball quickly to the pockets and close it out for the strike. Shea's feeling good, so the open frame coupled with the strike gives Lindenwood the early edge. Now the cleanup bowler for the Bulldogs, who's done some great things so far. Let's hear from the reigning college bowler of the year. My name is PJ Haggerty. I'm a criminology major, and I'm from Weimar, California. Uh, I was about two and uh, I was bowling with a plastic bowling pin and bowling set. It was, uh, it was just a ball and 10 pins, and I remember sitting there, and that's when it all started. It was just black. I think the letters were green, and I had uh, PJ on it, and that's all I remember, first ball. Three or four years ago, we bowled World Team Challenge in Las Vegas. I bowled with a couple of guys that I knew, and I loved the team environment. It was, uh, it was awesome bowling with four or five guys, you know, that, that you know they have, they have your back, and they're there for you. Uh, we won back-to-back -back years, which was, nobody had ever done it, which was awesome. Then from then on, I knew I wanted to go to, to Fresno State because um, it was close to home, and uh, I knew they were getting a lot of good players. I'm not ready to go at 8, 8 a.m. to go to school. So come bowl at 8 a.m., for sure. My ball? Which ball? Is this going to be on or no? I probably have 20 or 25 bowling balls. I mean, I, I have eight that I take everywhere. I have balls sitting at home that, that I never throw. If the girls don't ball, you know, they don't know anything about the game. You know, they, they can't go through what we go through. You know, that's why it's nice to have a girlfriend who knows a lot about the game, you know. You have to have a bowler. Whether it was I bowled good or not, you know, as long as the team did well, then I was satisfied. But receiving that award is something really special. It, was, uh, it wasn't expected, but uh, I knew I had a shot at it, you know. And uh, I'm very grateful to be on top. Definitely, it's a, it's a great chance to meet new people. It's a better college experience to do that. You know, you, you bond with your team. You, you guys hang out, out of, out of state, out of city. You know, you, uh, you, you have a lot of great memories, a lot of great experiences with, with your team. B.J. Haggerty looking to add one more tremendous experience for this team. He's coming off an open frame in the fourth. Got very close to the channel. And the size says it all. Never did make it back to the pocket. Leaving the 1-2-8. Haggerty able to pick up the spare. Bowling like the National Player of the Year. Now from one outstanding bowler to another, let's hear from Lindenwood's cleanup man. Brian Valenta, business major, Lockport, Illinois. It is worth noting again, Valenta uses that two-hand release. Unconventional, but very successful. Dialing up the Brooklyn strike, coming on the other side of the head pin. A good look at that release. As you see, he uses the left hand as a guide. 
Pin cam shows the clean hit for the strike. And Brian, with a reason to feel confidence, his team off to a great start. The number one team in the nation, Fresno State, finds themselves in a 22-pin deficit at the 2005 Bowling Championships. All right, time to talk fashion with the ladies of Lindenwood. What do you think of your team shirts? I really like them. I wish we had some like those. They're hot. Yeah, they are. Good luck. You think they had good luck, too? Yeah, yeah they do. Mr. Blackwell would be proud. The Lions looking good at bowling well with four strikes and a spare. Fresno State, two strikes, two spares, an open frame. And here's how the Baker system comes into play. Top of the order on, with Uihara. Push, push. All right. Cannot All right. duplicate the strike he posted right. the first time around. Ball comes up high on the head pin. Right, Very well. Leaving himself the three, six, and ten pins. You heard P.J. Haggerty calling for that ball to get lucky, but the 10 would not cooperate. Second open frame so far for Fresno State. A big crowd gathered at the Cherry Bowl in Rockford. Turns now to Emil Williams. Former high school champion, looking to add a team collegiate championship to his resume. And a strike his first time. All right, all right. All right, man. Come on, on that half, boy, on that half. Emil kept the ball inside too far. Got high on the head pin. Left the three and the ten. The ten nearly went down. Just did barely get that three, but the ten still standing. Wanted to push the three off and knock down the ten. And that creates the first open frame for Lindenwood. And a chance for Anderson to carve into that 24-pin lead. Make it back-to-back -back strikes for Keith. Anderson with that excellent form. Got the ball to come back nicely in the pocket for another strike. Come on, Scrivens, one time, man, one time. Make a shot for Jesse Scriven steps up for Lindenwood. He flirted with a perfect game earlier in his career. But he pulls this ball to the left, never does touch the head pin. And work to be done. Nine pin lingered, but it went down. Footwork, such a key to this sport. Picks up the one three spare. The Intercollegiate Bowling Championships enjoy a rich history. Founded in 1975, the initial champ, Wisconsin Lacrosse. Wichita State has dominated. Event shifted to the Baker format in 99, and as we touched on, first final appearance for both Fresno State and Lindenwood. After seven frames, Fresno State still down 24 pins, but they're coming off a strike. Eric Buckley earning national accolades. Had a spare his first time. And you could see Eric not happy with that result. A tricky proposition awaits. Got that ball way out towards the channel. Never had a chance to get it back towards the head pin. 
Baker rules allow for a sub, so Eric Buckley is done. Carlson turns to his left-hander, Sai Hayani, the freshman from Hawaii, facing a spicy moment. The thought process here, the southpaw, with a better chance to pick up this difficult 1-2-8-10 split. Got three, but couldn't get four as he was looking for the carom towards the right side. And you can see the different trajectory the ball rolls with coming off the left hand. So now two open frames. In the last three for Fresno State. Reed with international experience. Nearly in the gutter, but dials it back in to pick up seven pins. Hi, Reed. Like that, Mike? That one out the window. Wouldn't ask that for the Lions to have a man with professional experience to lean upon. That's Randy Lightfoot. Look at just how close that ball came to falling into the channel. Excellent view of the grip that Ryan Reed utilizes. Going after the 1 2 4 split. Got two, couldn't get three, leaving the four pin. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Shane. Pick me up, Matt, pick me up. An open frame for Lightfoot's team. Ryan going right after that head pin. The four would not go down, so through eight frames, Lindenwood up 22. Coming up, we've talked about Ryan Valenza's two-hand release. We'll tell you how it's done when we come back. Sports than any other network. It's the IBC from Rockford, Illinois, through eight frames. Fresno State trailing by 22. Brian Valenta employs that unique two-handed delivery. Want to know how it's done? Brian will tell us. Hi, my name is Brian Valenta. I'm from Lindenwood University. They say bowling two-handed is for sissies, and I'm going to prove to you it's not. Normal one-handers get up here, get set on their approach. Around the second or third step, they release their offhand and get to the line. On the two-handed side, I put my hand more on top of the ball than once. Then on the third or fourth step, it gets stabilized for foul. I don't bring it as back as far, but I put just as much on it. Go ahead. Check this out. Now call that a sissy. Certainly cannot argue with the results. The Lions looking good. So imperative for Fresno State to rally, but they're turning to the right man in the ninth frame. Miyasato. Throws a good looking ball and picks up the strike. Ivan, with that clean release, got the ball out nicely, and it rolls perfectly to the pocket for a strike. Fourth strike in this one for the Dogs. Here's Shea Bittenbender for Lindenwood. Left the four on the left side. Shea got that ball far too out towards the right down the lane. Came up short of the head pit. Has the one, two, four, seven potential spare opportunity. All four, baby. That's a big spare for the Lions. Now loads of pressure for Haggerty in a 22 pin hole. Realistically, he needs to strike out to give his team a chance at winning game one. But he's accustomed to pressure with that national team experience. Picks up the first strike, importantly. Crossed over the head pin, hit the right spot for the Brooklyn strike. 
And as P.J. demonstrated, he knew that was not his best ball. Still, a stellar result. Haggerty adjust here, dead on, another strike. A good recovery to get that ball right down the lane, into the pocket for a double to start the 10th frame. Haggerty, a third ball. Gets it wide. And seven pins go down. Excellent effort by Haggerty. That ends things for the Bulldogs. Fresno State at 185. So here's the scenario. Valenta working off a spare. Needs at least six pins. And then a spare for his team to have a chance to wrap up game one. That's a big time shot. He got nine pins. Ryan had the ball crossing over the head pin. Left just the five. It's a straightforward task, but the pressure is monumental. And Bryant's up to the challenge. So now the equation very simple for Brian Valenta and the Lindenwood Lions. Brian needs seven pins to wrap up the win in game one. Valenta does even better. A brilliant strike. Lindenwood grabs game one, 189 to 185. Valenta continues to get it done when it matters the most. Lindenwood takes game one. Fresno State needs to respond as CSTV's coverage of the IBC rolls on. We're back in Rockford, Illinois. Over 80 schools now offer men's bowling programs. Top 16 made it here to Rockford. In game one, Lindenwood edging Fresno State. Bulldogs need to respond. Joined by Fresno State coach Glenn Carlson. Glenn, your team left some open frames, difficult to recover from. What do you say to get ready for game two? Well, I think they're probably a little nerves on the first game. I think they'll make a lot better shots this game. Who are you looking for to step up as we move ahead? Well, I think the bottom is going to step up. Let's take a look at the game one numbers. Fresno State with the edge and strikes, but open frames loom large, and Fresno State with one more costly tally in that category. Time now for the second game. Teams will switch lanes, meaning that both will have to navigate the nuances of both lanes. It is Emil Williams to start the second, a strike and an open frame in the first. Another strike for Williams. Promising start for the Lions in game two. That was dead on from the moment it left his hand. Reason to be fired up as the Lions are looking good. Uihara, a strike and one open frame in the first game. The ball broke back early but went high through the middle and he has three pins in front of him. Chad trying to will that ball where he wanted it to go. As you see, didn't get the full cross carom he desired. So the 4-6-7 remains. Looking good, but pushed it a touch left. Left the six, and importantly, an open frame early for Fresno State. 
Now let's take a look at last year's championship, Kansas versus Saginaw Valley State. Saginaw took game one in game two. KU anchor bowler Rhino Page wrapped up game two. It came down to game three. National Bowler of the Year Bill O'Neill needed a strike, came just that close. Kansas takes the national title. For us to win the national championship, it was just sweet. It, it, was, it was so awesome because we came together at the right time. We hadn't won a tournament all year. And uh, we just forgot about everything, took one shot at a time, and sure enough, we were very successful. And Lindenwood looking to claim a national title of their own. Scrivens, sophomore from Pennsylvania. Everything but the 10 pin. Feeling good about that spare opportunity. Now, as you see, got to the middle a little quick. Still manages to get 9 of 10. No problem with that spare. Striking the spare in the opening two of the second for Lindenwood. Anderson, perfect so far. Needs to duplicate that feat coming off the open frame. And he's equal to the task. Make it three for three for strikes for Anderson. Haggerty wanted that ball to flip, flip, and Keith was able to get a good roll back to the pocket. All ten went down. Anderson likes what he sees. Indeed, he is the man so far for Fresno State. Reed looking for his first strike in this championship. And there it is. He's revving it up as well. Come on, believe that. Threw that ball nice and easy right into the pocket for a lion strike. Right now, right now. So the caliber of play picking up as this championship moves along. Time now for Eric Buckley. There's another strike. These teams are locked in. The pin cam reveals just how solidly that ball was thrown. So it's close to start the second game. And Fresno State facing a must-win situation. They bounce back from a wobbly start. When we come back, we'll hit the road with the Bulldogs. It's total access with Fresno State. In a variety of looks, bowlers have a unique relationship with this object. Actually, when I, when I was little, they were a lot like girls. <laughs> when I was little, uh, when I, was little I, I was just having fun and, you know, whatever one was there at the time that worked and was good, then that, that was my favorite one. I calm down now, but yeah. Uh, I go through bowling balls. The search for the perfect roll continues in Rockford, Illinois. Lindenwood took the opening game, and things are tight to start the second. The Lions turn to Shea Bittenbender. Best of three format to crown a national champion. And Shea got that ball out pretty wide. It came back late. He left the two and the eight pin. As you see, Tardy passed the head pin. Shea, a team captain for the Lions. And he picks up the spare, bringing it in focus for Lindenwood. Two strikes, two spares in this game for the Lions. Fresno State up next. It was a long journey from California, but this is a team that has fun on and off the lanes. Here we go, finally going to Milwaukee, then on to Illinois. We always have a good time no matter what we do. Um, we're we're a great we're a great bunch. You know, we all get along. We all hang out outside of outside of bowling in school. We have yeah. <laughs> our yeah, we, we play, we play, we play Texas Hold'em all the time. Yeah. You know, want to create like a team thing also. You know, like us against another group. Just just more bonding together. That's what we've always done all year. Now Milwaukee. 
You gotta see this guy's face. <laughs> this dude's face is hilarious. Face Bezos take number one. We never really argue, fight. <laughs> My hand. <laughs> you know, we always find a solution, which is what's great about all of us. We all get along and it works really well. Chicken time. Finding our room. What do you want to eat? I don't care. It's, it's like a fraternity. I mean, guys that you're so close to. Can I have no sauce, tomato, or uh, lettuce? Did you get one of those? Never been so close to six guys ever. So. Yeah! <laughs> this team can't be replaced by anything. Not for free. No. Ever. Pretty tight. Yeah. Welcome to the Intercollegiate Bowling Championships. Once you've gone through college bowling, it's like it's just like a part of you. That's what these teams are playing for the Helmer Cup, named after the late Kerm Helmer, longtime coach at Erie Community College, led his team to four IBC titles. Miyasato shined in his native Hawaii, bottom of the fourth frame, Fresno State. And the alignment on the right side waiting to be done. Assistant coach Chris Preble knows just how important this spare would be. Could not knock down the 10. And that is a costly open frame for the Bulldogs. Ivan chopping off the 3 and 6. But didn't get the bounce back for the 10. Brian knows what perfect games are all about. Five already in his young career. And that is picture perfect. Another strike for Valenta. This guy knows how to work the crowd as well. Haggerty, the star of tomorrow, trying to seize the moments in the present. And it's every bowler's nightmare, that 7-10 split forthcoming. P.J. dumbfounded at how that sequence unfolded. Ball got through the pins a bit rapidly, but he expected a better result. Haggerty hoping that Toy Story ball can produce a improbable ending to this frame. And straight down the middle, he got neither pin. Let's take a quick look at the stats of the anchor bowlers. Both have posted impressive averages, but the key distinction, that one open frame left by Haggerty. Haggerty trying to rally his teammates, but another open frame for Fresno State. And Lindenwood increases their lead in the 2005 Intercollegiate Bowling Championship. Audrey Miyasato came all the way from Hawaii to watch your son Ivan bowl. What are your emotions like right now? I'm so excited. I, can, I can't say anything. <laughs> what would you tell the old American to pick up the play? No, I'll say, go Bulldogs, go Bulldogs. <laughs> the dogs need to follow that advice. Imperative for them to raise their play. Lindenwood putting together three strikes, two spares. First five frames of game two, already up a game in this best of three format. Here's Williams. Got them all except for the three pin. Meal seemed to stick at the line a little, hold the ball left of the head pin. Fortunate just to leave the three, as you saw him grimace a touch as he let that ball go. Glanced it, but good enough to pick up the spare. Time to work that good luck charm. Turned now to Chad Uihara, who has labored so far in this championship. Has that footwork aligned. Okay, come on, great. Yeah. 
The encouragement paid dividends. A significant strike for the Bulldogs. Bulldog backers doing all they can. Chad, a nifty ball that drilled the pocket perfectly. Scribbins has an answer. Yes, he does not have a textbook approach, but there's no arguing with the results. All 10 fall. Lindenwood continues to look good in their quest for a national title. Anderson, nobody's been better than him in this final round. He remains absolutely perfect. As you see, this ball started more towards the center than earlier rolls. Didn't have to turn as much, but was just as good for Mr. Anderson. Reed has bowled well in international competition. It's a strike fest at the Cherry Bowl. And there's the Lady Lions. They have to believe that the men's team getting closer to a first national championship for that program. Reeds. Second strike in the second game. He is thoroughly pumped up. Bottom of the eighth frame. Buckley good for a strike the last time out. Basically needs one here to preserve Fresno State's hopes in the second game. And can only come up with seven pins. And the frustration beginning to mount for the Bulldogs. Cleared out the middle, but... Has work on both sides of the lane. Gunning towards the right, but couldn't get one of those pins to kick across. So Fresno State facing a major hole. And for the fans of the Lindenwood Lions, they can almost taste the national title. For Lindenwood, team captain Shea Bittenbender. If he strikes here, it's over. And he's got it! The Lions know the math is on their side. They've wrapped up the national title and they do it in outstanding fashion. Three straight strikes posted by Lindenwood. And what a moment for the Lions to savor. That's what a champion looks like. Still, the frames need to be filled out. And a strike for Fresno State. Miyasato dials one up. Fittingly, it is Valenta who will finish things off for Lindenwood. Piling up more pins for a team that has captured its first national title in bowling. Needs that for the spare, and he's got it. Valenta has been oh so sharp in this championship competition. So it's P.J. Haggerty who will close things out for Fresno State. He's meant everything to this program. And another nice achievement, picking up the strike. And now in a nice gesture, 
Lindenwood coach Randy Lightfoot will let a senior roll the final ball. It's Mark Schofield as a sub. Little Russ gets nine out of 10 and the celebration getting underway for the Lions. A nice gesture of sportsmanship by both teams. Lindywood wins the 2005 Intercollegiate Bowling Championship. A moment to savor for the Lions. Indeed, it's all about championships. The captain, Shea Bittenbender, clinched the win. With the victorious Lindenwood Lions coach, you bowled professionally. How did the emotions compare of winning a national title on the college level? Well, it all comes back to me, the, the pressure of bowling on TV, and I think in this, uh, in this format, it's even more pressure. But uh, this is the most unbelievable thing ever happened to me, to be honest. Brian, first of all, we talked about this release. Do you think you're going to be a trendsetter, see other young people throw the ball out that way? Oh, yes, it is, it'll come. There will be more sooner. There will be. Well, we, we hope you get things going that way. Talk about how special this unit is, and we'll get the captain in in a second. It seems like you're so close-knit, and you relied on each other to get the title done. The seniors were everything. You know, leadoff, man, it was all team. They held me up during this this day, this uh, TV, and we all came through at the right time to make it worthwhile. Jay, you're the captain. Talk about the emotions right now. How special does this feel? This is amazing. I mean, for me, it's only a, I'm only a sophomore, but for all these guys that are seniors here and everything, this is the biggest point. This is the biggest tournament of their lives right now, and I know that they're feeling the best they've ever felt in their life. And we have to end with the fashion question. How much power did you generate from the shirts? Oh, the, the shirts is all there. They're the most comfortable shirt, shirt ever. Take right. off. <laughs> yeah. Linda Wood Lions, IBC champ for 2005. Congrats to the Lions. For our entire CSTV crew, I'm Brian Weber. For more, log on to CSTV.com, the ultimate destination for scores, news, highlights, and analysis. This has been a presentation of CSTV, college sports television, number one in college sports. So long from the Cherry Bowl in Rockford, Illinois. Thanks so much for watching.